Hello. During this talk, I'm going to present our work on constructing a database of arterial pulse waves. Cardiovascular disease accounts for a quarter of deaths in the UK, and during the course of this talk, it will account for three deaths, eight hospital admissions, and it will cost the UK economy £360,000. The arterial pulse wave is already widely used to identify patients at risk of cardiovascular events. Clinical devices extract blood pressure and heart rate from it, and smart wearables use the photoplethysmogram, or PPG, pulse wave to monitor heart rate. The pulse wave contains a wealth of additional information on the heart and blood vessels, providing opportunity to measure additional parameters indicative of cardiovascular disease, such as arterial stiffness. If algorithms could be developed to extract such parameters reliably, then people could continuously track their own health and be prompted to make lifestyle changes. To introduce myself, my name's Peter Charlton. I work at King's College London alongside colleagues at St Thomas's Hospital. Our work focuses on developing signal processing techniques which could then be used in the clinical setting. The aim of this work is to construct a database of pulse waves representative of a healthy adult population for developing pulse wave algorithms. Firstly, a model of pulse wave propagation was used to simulate pulse waves, including the PPG at a range of measurement sites. Secondly, additional simulations were performed after adjusting the model to mimic a population sample consisting of healthy adults of different ages exhibiting a wide range of cardiovascular properties. Thirdly, the simulated pulse waves were compared with in vivo data to investigate how realistic they are. The methods. We used a one-dimensional model of pulse wave propagation to simulate pulse waves. This consists of three components. The larger arteries are modelled as thin, deformable tubes with geometric and mechanical properties varying along their length. At the inlet, an inflow waveform models flow from the heart into the aorta. At the peripheral outlets, Winkessel models are used to model the vascular beds. A novel aspect of this work is simulating the photoplethysmogram, or PPG, signal. The PPG signal is obtained by shining a light onto a tissue, such as the finger, and measuring the light which is either transmitted through or reflected from the tissue. This varies with each heartbeat as the volume of arterial blood in the tissue changes. The attenuation of light due to the venous blood and other components of the tissues remains relatively static. In this study, the PPG was modelled by calculating the volume of blood stored in the terminal wind kessels. We reviewed the literature to determine which input parameters change with age. These included the geometry of the larger arteries and properties of the arterial walls, heart and vascular beds. We then extracted mean and standard deviation values for each of these parameters from the literature. Some of these were relatively straightforward to implement, such as changes in geometry. Changes in arterial stiffness were modelled by adjusting the Young's moduli to achieve wave speeds which are similar to those measured in vivo. This graph shows how the wave speeds of the larger arteries on the right were increased dramatically with age, whereas there was little change in the smaller arteries on the left. Cardiac properties were prescribed to the model by adjusting the inflow waveform. Here the waves used for the 25 and 75 year old model are shown, the 25 year old having a larger stroke volume. Normal variation in parameters within age groups 
were modelled by varying parameters by half and one standard deviation from the age specific mean. The results. This shows the simulated pulse waves for a baseline 25 year old subject. From left to right are the pressure, flow velocity, luminal area and PPG pulse waves. We extracted hemodynamic parameters from all of the pulse waves in the database and compared them to in vivo data. These plots show comparisons between in vivo blood pressures on the left of each pair and blood pressures from the database. We found that the trends in blood pressure with age were similar between the two and in addition the absolute values were also mostly similar. We then compared pulse wave propagation phenomena between the simulated and in vivo pulse waves. At the top left we found that the pulse pressure amplification from the aorta to the brachial artery decreased with age in the database, as is the case in vivo. We also found that the augmentation index increased with age, as expected, here measured from the carotid artery. The plots below show how the pulse waves changed with distance from the aortic root, the path here being from the aortic root through the arm to the finger. We also compared the shapes of pulse waves with in vivo data. And here, at the left, the carotid waveforms showed similar changes with age to those measured in vivo, with the secondary systolic peak increasing with age. The same could also be said for the radial waveforms, top right, and the digital, digital waveforms, bottom left. The femoral waveforms also mirrored those measured in vivo with the disappearance of the diastolic peak with age. So once one has simulated this database of pulse waves, how could it be used to develop signal processing algorithms? Well, we're particularly interested in estimating arterial stiffness from pulse waves. In this case study, we considered two broad categories of techniques for estimating arterial stiffness from pulse waves. Firstly, dual site techniques, which consist of measuring pulse waves simultaneously, such as two blood pressure pulse waves, extracting the transit time between the two, and then, with a the knowledge of the distance between the two locations, calculating the pulse wave velocity, which is related to arterial stiffness. Another set of techniques use a single pulse wave such as the PPG, perhaps acquired from the finger. They take measurements of features of the PPG and it's been proposed that these correlate in some cases with arterial stiffness. When we assessed these techniques on the database, we found that the dual site techniques, the pulse wave velocities, showed a very high correlation with a reference aortic pulse wave velocity. The arterial stiffness indices extracted from a single PPG waveform exhibited a wide range of correlations, in some cases quite a strong correlation of 0 0.80. Looking more closely at these, these function by analysing the shape of the pulse wave. Here the top plot shows the original pulse wave with various points identified on it. And then the second and third plots show the first and second derivative. One particular arterial stiffness index uses the second derivative. The modified aging index takes amplitudes from a few of the points on the second derivative and calculates an index which has been proposed is related to arterial stiffness. This plot shows the correlation between this arterial stiffness index and the reference aortic pulse wave velocity. When using all of the data from the database from ages 25 to 75 years old, 
there was a relatively good correlation of 0.76. But when considering only one particular age group, the strength of the correlation decreased dramatically. This is because not only does pulse wave velocity increase the arterial stiffness index, but cardiac properties also have a large effect on its value, with the heart rate, stroke volume and the duration of systole all, all affecting the arterial stiffness index. Looking more closely at the pulse waves, we can see that indeed at the top the pulse wave velocity does have an influence on the shape of the pulse wave but also the cardiac properties at the bottom also have an influence. In the future, we wish to extend the database by not only varying parameters independently, but also in combination with each other. We will then make the final database publicly available at our website. To conclude, we've developed methods for modeling the effects of aging and also for modelling the PPG pulse wave. And we believe that the resulting database of pulse waves could be used for in silico development of pulse wave algorithms. With that, I'll point you towards the references, thank my colleagues and funders, and point you towards the sources of information used in this presentation. Thank you for listening.